Many of you guys will remember them. Um, we've, we've had a partnership with them for many years now. Excited to have them share. Uh, I want to say thank you also uh, just for your prayers um, up at camp uh, this past week. That was kind of unexpected, me being up there again. And uh, you guys graciously uh, not only allowed me to go, but prayed for me while I was there. And, and we saw salvations and spirit baptisms and people respond to the call of God in their life. And, uh, man, just had a couple uh, heavy but but refreshing nights of repentance, and it was just powerful up there. So thank you for your prayers and uh, allowing uh, me to sow into the next generation. And that's like, that's part, that's part of your fruit, of your labors too. We're sowing into the kingdom, not just our church. So thank you for being there. We're, um, we're going to kind of follow the schedule we have been on the, on the live stream. Um, when, when we were shut down, we're going to actually have the message first and then worship. And so excited to have these guys with us and uh, pray um, that your hearts are open. And be sure to check out their table back there before you go. It's in the lobby back here. Um, and grab a prayer card. Uh, missionaries need our support in every way, but especially in prayer. So be sure to grab uh, their, their card and just put that on your refrigerator. Use it as a, as a Bible bookmark, whatever you need to do. But let me... Um, let me pray over these guys as they, as they come up and just pray over the service. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. God, we're so grateful to gather together. And, and uh, Lord, I pray that you um, would just open our, our hearts to the teaching of the word and, and uh, what you want to say to us through the Smiths, Lord. God, thank you for their faithfulness, for uh, just decades of faithfulness to Africa and, and saying yes to the call, Lord God, and for the fruit of their ministry. And uh, Lord, just burden our hearts for, for the things that burden your hearts in Africa specifically today, Lord God. And just give us open hearts to hear what you would say. In your name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Billy. It's, it's great to be back here in Linton. And as he said, uh, pick up one of those prayer cards on the table where uh, normally we pass them out to everyone, and you're going to take one home whether you like it or not. But uh, with all the new protocols in place, we uh, put them out on the table there, and we're asking you to just pick one up, take it home, Put it in your Bible, put it up on your refrigerator, whichever one you open the most. Uh, that way you can remember to pray for us as we go back to Togo in West Africa. You know, with a name like Smith, you need all the help you can get. People always say they'll remember my name, but they promptly forget because there's just nothing to do with a Smith. But uh, please pick this up and remember to uh, pray for us. Now, the easy way to remember to pray for us is if you forget the name, you lose the card, you can still remember to pray for us because we're living in the nation of Togo. That's spelled T-O-G-O. -O. Now, every time you go across the street here to McDonald's and you order something, they'll ask you the same question. Do you want this here or to go? When they say that, remember to pray for that missionary who's there, whatever his name is, and uh, the Lord will credit it to our accounts. I'd, I'd like to invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We'll read a few verses from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. <laughs> you know, not long ago I was up in uh, northern Indiana in Napanee, shared that same story about how to remember to pray for us, and uh, the Holy Spirit helped us that evening. And as I was at the table greeting people at the end, one young man came up to me, tears rolling down his face. He stuck out his hand. He says, God bless you, Brother McDonald. You've been such a blessing tonight. <laughs> so some missionaries getting prayers that are intended for us. So please remember to pray for us as we go back to West Africa. And uh, I believe the Lord will credit it to our accounts. Before we go much further, let me uh, just express my joy that I'm here with my wife today. That's not something that's usual for us as missionaries because while we're here in the States, we're often in separate churches. Brenda will be preaching somewhere, I'll be preaching somewhere, and we often say goodbye on Saturday and don't see each other again until late on Monday when we've uh, returned home. But she's here with us today, and I, I wanted you to see her pretty dress, so why don't you stand up and say hi to everybody, Brenda. <laughs> She's dressed in an outfit that comes from the north of Togo or even up in the nation of, to the north of us, Burkina Faso. That's the style that they wear there. And so she's wearing that to honor them as well today. In addition to all that she does in Africa, Brenda is also the writer for BMC for your children's church that's used all across the United States. If you want to learn about missions, there's a character named Winnie the World. That's my wife. She's been Winnie the World since we were pastors here in Indiana uh, several years ago. I'm dressed in what's 
uh, called a traditional three-piece suit in West Africa. One of the great things we do in our part of the world is whenever we have a big celebration, a church has a 50th anniversary or something like that, they'll often have a special fabric made just for that event. And everyone will go out and they'll buy the fabric and then they'll have a local tailor or a local seamstress come and make their clothes for them. So you see everyone dressed in the same material, but all kinds of different styles. Uh, this material was actually made for the WMs of Togo to celebrate their 50th anniversary just last year. And this was what I wore to the big day of celebration. Uh, this three-piece suit is the pants underneath. You've got a shirt here and then this large outer garment that lets me take my shade with me everywhere I go in that hot tropical sun. The only problem with wearing an outfit like this is whenever I'm preaching or teaching, I have to keep adjusting these sleeves all the way, all the way through. But that's a pretty small price to pay to look this good, don't you think? I'm so happy today because the first thing I did when I woke up after praying and uh, opening up my phone to Facebook, I saw a picture from a colleague missionary that he took in church in Togo. That's the first time a picture could be taken like that in the last four months. They've shut the country down almost completely to try to control the coronavirus. And they've had uh, quite a bit of success, actually, that we've had more cases in Lafayette, Indiana, than we've had in the entire nation of Togo. Uh, so we're thankful for that, but we're especially thankful that they're able to come back and worship together uh, in uh, following some of the same protocols that we're trying to follow here. But at least they're back together and there's nothing like worshiping with each other, with brothers and sisters and seeing each other face to face. The church in Togo is growing. It's a lot different than it is here. You know, uh, when I walk into church in Togo, I'm usually walking on the same thing that I was walking on when I was outside. The same dirt path that has led me to the church is the same dirt floor that we're going to be using for worship. Uh, when I get out of my car, there's always people running out to the church right toward me. First time I pulled up to church in Togo, I didn't know what was happening. I got out of my speed to light car, I went to the back and I got my guitar in one hand and my Bible in the other. All of a sudden there were about 15 young people running out of the church building right toward me. One of them started pulling at my guitar, the other one was pulling at my Bible. I didn't know if I was being robbed or what was going on. It, the story is that they wanna honor the man of God so much that it would be a shame for them to have the pastor even carry his guitar or carry his Bible into church. And it's such an honor for the young people to arrive early. And when the pastor shows up, they run out and they carry whatever he's carrying so that they can bring his Bible in and set it next to where he's going to be sitting. Are you getting a witness here, Pastor Billy? I could sense an anointing growing back here. Uh, there might be some teaching coming forth <laughs> here soon. And it's an exciting place to be when you walk into church. The typical church in Togo is not really nice walls and carpeted like this, but it's often just poles holding up uh, palm leaves that have been woven together to make a roof. Uh, sometimes it's not even that fancy. Uh, one of the things we missionaries do that we like to help local churches with is we put up tabernacles for them. The tabernacle is just a metal like a structure, uh, like a uh, shelter house here in Indiana, that the poles are metal and the roof is metal. And this way, the Muslim terrorists cannot burn it down. We have many churches that have been burned down just in the last 12 months. Uh, the, the pagans can't tear it down or burn it down. And so it gives them a place to worship out of the sun, out of the rain, and it enables them then to be able to uh, ha as the Lord provides, put up walls and put windows on their buildings and so forth. As th at the rate the church is growing, the Togolese church has asked me to try to raise enough money so that they can build their own tabernacles. I'll be putting two tabernacles together by the Lord's grace. They already have property for me. But if I put two tabernacles together end to end and put a welder and a few other uh, uh, tools in there, for the price of two tabernacles, I can put up a factory that will allow the Togolese then to be able to build their own as the Lord provides for them. We have several large churches there that can do this. And so uh, by God's grace, we're already about halfway there. A 
few years ago, one of our graduates from the West Africa Advanced School of Theology, that's the school where we serve, where we're training leaders for 21 different countries in West and Central Africa. One of our graduates from the nation of Nigeria had graduated that day, and he gave a little reception for some of the people that had helped him to get through school. And as he was thanking everyone for what they had done, giving him books and so, things like that, at the end, he said, in his way of saying, thank you very much, he just looked at the crowd and he said, thank you, thank you, and thank you again. But it seemed like it wasn't enough for him, and he almost began to shake as he thought of the biggest thing he could possibly think of, and he just yelled out, elephant thank you. Well, that's why Brenda and I are here today, to give you an elephant thank you, because we first came here when Pastor Dean Grable was pastoring here and presented ourselves as missionaries. And you folks, some folks have gone on to be with the Lord, but this church began to support us from the beginning, before we ever went to language school, before we ever went to Africa. And so we're so thankful for the role that you've played in our ministry and that you've allowed us to be a part of your world outreach. And now we're here in the US asking for your help one more time so that we can get back to Africa this corona thing is not going to last forever. And when it does, we want to go back to help the church continue to grow in West and Central Africa. And we appreciate any help that you can give us to get back there. We're looking at raising, as I said, $25,000 for that tabernacle project. We're about halfway there right now. We need to raise another $1,500 a month in monthly commitments in order to go back because of inflation and so forth, so that we can go back and continue to teach at the West Africa Advanced School of Theology. I ask you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul begins verse 1 after talking in chapter 3 about the wonders of being a Christian and how wonderful it is to be a Christian and to be in the Lord's service. And then he begins verse 1 of chapter 4 by saying, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Friends, there's a lot of things in the world that cause people to lose heart today. This corona situation that we've been in for the last several months has caused many people to lose heart, have caused many people to give up, have caused many people to question their very existence. And that's just here in the US, but it's happening all over the world. Paul says we don't lose this, we don't lose heart because we've been given this ministry by God. God has given you a role to play in the kingdom of God. God has given you a role to play here in Linton, here in this church, and because of that, we don't lose heart because we know who we belong to and because we know that he's leading us and we know that we have a purpose in our lives. Many things can cause people to lose heart. <laughs> Since going to Africa, I've had malaria more than 100 times. It's gotten to where the other missionaries have given me a name. I didn't ask for it. I'm not sure I'm proud of it, but they all call me Malaria King. You know, I always wanted to be a high achiever, but that, that wasn't really what I had in mind. They tell me if you get typhoid fever, you should only get it once. You'll have antibodies after that that will protect you. I've only had it three times so far. I'm praying that the third time it took that uh, I don't have the antibody, that the antibodies will protect me. These kind of things can cause people to lose heart. About a year and a half ago, Pastor Pierre Wedrago was finishing his service on Sunday morning the people had left all except for five of his key leaders and they were standing outside in front of the church just talking about the way the Lord was leading the church and sharing some vision with each other. Two young men rode up on motorcycles, each one carrying an AK-47 and they held all six of our brothers at gunpoint. They gave the pastor the chance to convert to Islam or die. The pastor said, I've served the Lord this long. I can't change right now. I'm continuing to serve the Lord. They took him out behind the building. The other five brothers heard the gunshot while they were being held at gunpoint by the second gunman. And one after the other, they all followed their pastor into martyrdom that day. The scripture says when the shepherd is cast down that the sheep are scattered. And this was, has been the case in northern Burkina Faso. The government says we can't protect you Christians anymore. Get out of the north. And so the hundreds and even thousands of people have left the north of Burkina Faso. In the assemblies of God alone, we have over 20,000 refugees that have moved from the north to the south part of their country 
Just imagine here in Linton if another thousand Assemblies of God members showed up and said, we want to be part of your church, but you're going to have to feed us and you're going to have to take care of us. That's what the church in the South is dealing with. But instead of saying, oh, woe is me, instead of losing heart, they've sent each one of these pastors who was forced to leave the North into little villages and little towns that didn't have churches yet and sent believers along with them so that little by little they're planting churches. They've planted over 200 churches since they've been cast out of their homes in just the last few months. Because we've been given this ministry by God, we do not lose heart. Now, Togo's just a little country, about two-thirds the size of Indiana. We have the same population as Indiana. Now, here in Indiana, we have somewhere around 240 Assemblies of God churches. The last count we had in Togo was we have over 2,500 Assemblies of God churches. We've planted more than 1,000 churches in just the last five years. Why would we lose heart when God is working like that? When we see people coming to the Lord almost faster than we can count them. We see churches being planted every single day in the nation of Togo. We don't lose heart because we've been given this ministry by God. Paul continues, verse 5, he says, For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. I wish I could tell you what a joy you've allowed me to experience since going to Africa because I've had the opportunity to preach to people that have never heard the gospel before. These people grow up thinking that there's many gods and, and these spirits are trying to control your life and unless you do your rituals just right, unless you sacrifice just right, they're going to come and get you. They're going to make your children sick. They're going to destroy your business or your marriage. They live in constant fear. And I can stand before them and tell them there really is a God of love. And this God loved them so much that he sent his only son from heaven to be born of a virgin here on earth. While Jesus was here, he went about doing good and healing everyone who was under the devil's power. That he hung on the cross for their sins, even though he never sinned. But he rose on the third day, and now he's ascended into heaven, where he lives to make intercession for his saints. And this same Jesus is returning one day to judge the earth. I've seen people get so excited when I've given the altar call they've actually pushed other people out of the way so they could run to the front and give their life to this God of love before the offer expires God is pouring out his spirit in West and Central Africa and it's a wonderful time to be about the master's business we don't preach ourselves but we preach Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants a few years ago, there was trouble in town. Our, the government hasn't always been stable in Togo since we've lived there. And this was a particularly unstable time when the students that were from other countries really didn't even want to leave our campus to go to church because it was dangerous for them. And so they asked if they could start having Bible study in the student chapel on Sunday morning instead. So they started doing that and some neighbors found out and they started coming and then they started inviting their neighbors and they started inviting their neighbors. We had a church on our hands before we knew what was happening, we, a church we didn't even try to plant. Today, the picture I received for, was from the Wast International Chapel, a sanctuary that seats about 1,600 people. But the last time we were there, we were able to see that they had 500 plastic chairs outside because there's just not enough room for the people to meet inside. God is pouring out his spirit. A few years ago, we started a radio station there on campus, little low-power FM radio station. The idea here was we wanted to give our students some exposure to media ministries. We thought when they went back to their own countries, they would probably be asked by the government from time to time to talk on the government radio station about what Christians believe at Easter and at Christmas time. You see, these governments don't know they're supposed to be afraid of that sort of thing yet. And so we wanted them to do a good job. We set up this FM station as a training area. We asked the government for permission to broadcast. They said, no one's ever asked for that before. Until we get a licensing procedure in place, all we're going to let you do is test your equipment. So we started testing our equipment, 18 hours a day. 
seven days a week. We tested our equipment with good Christian music, with teaching from local pastors. In about two weeks' time, we had become the most popular radio station in that part of the world. Today, the government of Togo tells us that even though we broadcast into four different countries, in Togo alone, Radio Jesus Loves You, the Frequency of Hope, has more than a million and a half people tuning in every single day to hear the gospel. And I could literally keep you here all evening telling you testimonies of people whose lives have been saved, who have been healed, whose marriages have been restored, simply by listening to the radio. The first day we were tuning our transmitter, we really were just testing our equipment. We had a little CD player, those of you who remember what CDs were. Uh, we had a CD player that we were playing some worship music on and tuning the transmitter. The next day, an 85-year-old woman came to our campus. She had walked almost five miles to get to us, and she said, I need to talk to whoever was playing that music yesterday. She told us her story that she had been in bed the day before, and she was tuning her radio and came across some worship music. It sounded so peaceful. She said, I just decided to leave it there. Well, as she left it there, she had been in bed for the last 10 years. She'd spent all her money on doctors. She'd had voodoo priests come in and leave little charms under her bed to keep the spirits away so that she could be healed. And nothing had worked for her until along came a song that said, Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. And she said, when, she, when I heard that song, I got up out of bed and I walked into the next room and I told my husband, something's happening to me and I don't know what it is. And so she walked that distance the next day to come and ask us who it was that had healed her and what she needed to do to repay him. <laughs> of course, we were happy to tell her. God is pouring out his spirit today. We don't preach ourselves, but we preach Jesus Christ and ourselves as your servants for his sake. Verse 7, Paul says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. What can God do with a jar of clay? It's amazing what God can do with anything. When we look in the mirror, most of the time, if you're like me, you only see the jar of clay. You don't see the treasure. That is Jesus Christ, the Lord of lords and King of kings inside of you that has placed his spirit in you so that you can make a difference in the world where you are. That's the treasure that we hold when we're Christians. And that's the treasure that God has put into us. I was talking with... Uh, Dennis and Margaret earlier today and saying this last five years I did things I didn't I never wanted to do I, I started putting up the tabernacles I talked about uh, I, I started drilling some wells that I didn't want to do uh, I got a, an email from a Presbyterian church of all things in Missouri saying can we help with a water project and no one else would help with it so I decided Okay, well, I'll do what little bit I can. We went up to a village called Naki Est. It was the most pathetic thing you've ever seen. These ladies were getting water from, it's almost too much to even call it a stream, just almost standing water where the cows were standing in the water. This is where they were drinking. They were washing their babies. They were washing their clothes. And you just saw all kinds of disease in the place. Several people had tried to drill wells there and come up dry and, this little church sent us the money, so we went ahead and, and uh, talked with a local pastor and said, let's do this and try to bless your community, try to bless your church. We went down 160 meters and came up with a dry hole. The pastor and I cried and cried together. We didn't know what, what God had in store here. It took uh, several months, but I was able to find someone to help us to do a second try. The well drill driller said he'd give us about a 60 to 70 percent chance of hitting water if we went down to 220 meters. That's a long way, folks. We were out of the country at the time, but the pastor began texting us and saying, the technician has shown up, and, and I had counseled him before, whatever the technician says, you do, because if you don't, if we get a dry hole this time, we can't ever try again. This is the end. Well, the technician showed up, and he identified the best place to drill water. It was going to be about 100 feet or so away from the church building, still on the church property, though. And the pastor said, no, you're putting it right in front of the church. 
And the dwell driller said, no, no, that's not the best place. He said, no, no. When the man of God came and visited, he prophesied that there would be a well right in front of this church. Uh, friends, I didn't prophesy. <laughs> if I did prophesy, I didn't know I prophesied. All I remember saying is, wouldn't it be wonderful if... That's not a prophecy. But he took it as the word of God, and he, he argued with the technician until finally they decided to drill there. It took them three days. They had to break all kinds of rock and so forth. In those three days' time, the voodoo priests came, and they started their dancing and chanting, trying to make sure that this would not work, this would not bless the church. They sacrificed animals at the site. They even sacrificed a pig on the third day. The pastor told the driller, we're not going down to 220. We'll hit we'll hit water at 180 when they got to 180 water began gushing up out of the hole he told me amen he told me we danced until we dropped that night <laughs> in the meantime in between our first and second hole two government ministers came up with big fanfare parades and everything in order to drill holes we're going to save this community they kept coming up with dry holes now fast forward about six months and we are there for the well dedication. Ladies who are coming to this well, because what happened was as soon as they capped the well, as soon as they began pumping, every well for five miles around went completely dry. Now when we went up, the ladies are waiting an hour and a half in line just to get to the well. The pastor has put a speaker that runs on a solar panel out on next to the well playing the Bible. The, as long as the sun's shining, the Bible's being broadcast to, to these ladies. It's become the center of town. We went to dedicate the well. Several government fish, officials came. The prefet, who is kind of like the county commissioner there, a Muslim man dressed in full Muslim guard, came and helped to dedicate the well. They asked me to fill the first ceremonial jug of water and give it to him, and I thanked him for all the good that he did for the community and told him we were praying for him. But afterwards, we went to the pastor's house for a little reception. We had a lot of discussion, and then finally the big man, the prefet, he cleared his throat, and we all knew it was time for a speech. And he was going to give a speech, and he gave the story in much greater detail than I'm giving to you today of everything that happened until we got water in the well. And then he pointed to me and pointed his finger right in my face, and he said, but there's one thing I have to tell you. And I thought, oh, no, what did I do now? He said, your God is the true God. We don't preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. We have this treasure in jars of clay. We, our best may not seem like enough, but when Jesus Christ is in us, we don't have to lose heart because he's put his spirit in us to do great things for him. God is pouring out his spirit today. I want to be a part of that. Don't you want to be a part of that? Thanks to your faithful prayers and your faithful giving, millions of people are hearing the gospel today through the radio waves of Radio Jesus Loves You in West Africa. Thanks to your faithful prayers and your faithful giving, hundreds of thousands of children all across the United States are learning about missions in Children's Church through the writing that you've allowed Brenda to do over the years for BGMC and Winnie the World. Thanks to your faithful prayers and your faithful giving, tens of thousands of people have been saved touched, filled with the Holy Spirit, and healed as you've allowed me and Brenda to preach and teach in open-air meetings throughout West and Central Africa. Thanks to your faithful prayers and your faithful giving, Brenda and I have had a hand in training more than a thousand leaders for Africa's church. All of this in just the last four years. So all I can say is thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you again. Elephant, thank you for allowing us to be a part of your world outreach. May the Lord bless you. Pastor Billy, would you come? We need missionaries on a regular basis that will come and challenge us and uh, keep our worldview big and our heart for the gospel more than just about us. Um, thank you. You're, you're so nice, and I hate to follow you because I'm going to step on your toes 
just a little bit. Man, I'm convicted every time that we have missionaries in, and I, I just think for most of us as, a, as American Christians, our faith wouldn't make it outside of America. If it's not easy for us, we wouldn't engage. The things that they have to do in other countries uh, to be a follower of Jesus, the risk that they undertake. If God has stirred your heart today, uh, see their table, sponsor them personally. You can do it through our church. Um, we don't take up an offering anymore, but the box is back there. You can, you can do some, pay your tithes, but anything above and beyond that, bless them today. Help them spread the gospel. I'm, I'm shameless, and I don't remember to take up an offering, but I will remember every time for a missionary. I'm shameless in plugging them and, and them advancing the kingdom. Uh, man, had malaria over 100 times and typhoid three times. How old are you? 63. And wants to go back. That's amazing. What have we really given for the gospel? What have we really suffered for Jesus? That's incredible to me. I heard uh, Pastor Steve Furr even this week just share some things. Uh, he, he said a strong quote, and you may wrestle with this, but he said, it's not fair... He heard another missionary say this, it's not fair for anyone to hear the gospel twice when there's still people who haven't heard it once. Over three billion people in our world today that haven't had an adequate presentation of the gospel. And if we were all being obedient to the commission, that wouldn't be the case. So there's two things I want us to pray about in this moment. What are you doing to personally uh, take ownership for the good news of Christ? What are you doing to, to spread that, to share that? Are you fulfilling the Great Commission? Are you partnering with Jesus to advance his kingdom? We're so focused on, on our kingdom and just us surviving and, and our finances. And, man, we're called to, to go. We're called to send. We're called to give. Like our lives, it's kingdom first mentality. Our lives revolve around glorifying God and, and reaching people for his glory. Let's, let's pray. Father, in this moment, Lord, I pray for the conviction of your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Thank you that you love us enough to convict us, Lord. Thank you for the challenge we heard from, from Pastor Smith, Lord. May our hearts be stirred as we recognize uh, there's an incredible need for people to hear the gospel. And, and God, thank you that you're working. Regardless of what we see in, in media, in the news, you are working. And, and there's revival taking place all over the world. And part of the reason that's happening is because people overseas are, are active in sharing their faith. They're active in, in living to see your kingdom advance in them and through them. Lord, convict our hearts of our need to share, of our need to go, of our need to more intentionally shine brightly for you, Jesus. Convict us of our need to, to give to missions or whatever that looks like. Just may we be willing to say yes to your call today, whatever that needs to look like for us. With every eye closed, if you're saying the Lord is stirring your heart about your need to, to partner with him, to fulfill the great commission, to preach the good news of Jesus to all creation and make disciples, can I see your hand if you're challenged this morning to, to step it up in that area? Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Several hands. God, I pray for those that have raised their hand, Lord God. I pray even in this moment that you would just burden them for the things that burden your heart, Lord God. May we feel the weight of your heart for your lost sons and daughters, Lord Jesus. In our own family, complete strangers, everyone we see, Lord God, help us to see them the way you see them and, and break our hearts for, for their salvation, Lord God, recognizing that everyone's gonna, gonna perish, gonna go to hell unless they receive your salvation, unless they confess you as their Lord. Is there anyone here today that needs to make that confession and, and, and say, I need Jesus to be Lord of my life. I need to confess my sins to him. And the word says that he is faithful and just to forgive us. And you can begin a, a brand new or restart a relationship with him. Anyone need to do that today? Can I see your hand? I just want to pray with you. One more thing I want to thank you. Lord, I pray for those that have raised their hand, Lord God. I, I pray right now that you would just draw them nearer to you and remind them of your, of your grace, Lord God. When we call out to you, we find your grace, we find your forgiveness. Lord, I pray you'd place a hunger in them for, uh, for you, for your word, for time in your presence through prayer. I thank you for your salvation. In your name we pray. One more thing I want to um, ask with every eye closed before we go into a time of worship. 
we're going to do this next week, but if God is stirring your heart today, we're going to do a pledge for missions uh, next week. But if God is stirring your heart today and say, you know, I, I, need to, I need to make a sacrifice. I need to be intentional about not just paying my tithes, but supporting missions and missionaries. Or maybe God has stirred your heart specifically towards the Smiths today. Can I see your hand? I just want to pray with you and celebrate what God is stirring in your heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, I pray for those whose hearts you're stirring through this, Lord God. I pray, uh, Lord, that just the truth of your word would be uh, just ingrained in us right now, Lord, that you are so faithful to give us everything we need and some left over to help others. God, I pray that we would use the, the portion of what you've given us to help others, to help others. Lord, we would, we would get our eyes off of ourselves and we'd be intentional about advancing the kingdom with our own words, but also with our own finances. And our, and our whole life would just revolve around that, Lord Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our worship team is going to come. And uh, in just a moment, we're going to celebrate um, a baptism. And uh, Bentley, I want to single you out. Uh, she, um, this girl whose heart is broken for missions every time she hears about it has probably given more than most people in the church already this year. Um, stand up and show them your new shirt you just got. Just gave $100 to Speed the Light. Um, it's just awesome what she's doing. Really cool. Very cool. And, uh, and wants God to, to break her heart for missions. Every, every time we have a service like this, uh, she's stirred. It's just really exciting to see. Lord, I thank you for this time that we have to worship you, Lord, just to celebrate who you are, uh, your goodness, Lord God. Stir our hearts, Lord. Draw us near to you. Uh, you inhabit the praises of your people, God. Thank you for that truth. And as we, as we worship you, as we celebrate you, Lord God, draw us near to you. Remind us of your faithfulness, Lord God, and remind us that you are with us. You're an ever-present help in time of trouble, Lord God. I pray that we would celebrate you in the good times and the bad. We'd recognize that you're good and faithful no matter what we face, God. We lift you up, and we recognize that we're not going to quit. We're not going to give up because you have given us a calling. You have equipped us, Lord Jesus. So encourage hearts today and excite us about who you are and the thing that you've called us to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Join us in worship this morning. Blessed be your name in the land that is planted for, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name when I'm bound in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, Still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, and blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your glorious name. And blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes, My 
heart will choose to say, who oh, blessed be your name. You give, you give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, who oh, blessed be you give. Who oh, you give and take. Lord, blessed be your name, and blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Praise you, Lord. We're going to continue praising the Lord with a baptism this morning. And if that doesn't excite you, I want you to take two fingers and put them right there on your wrist and check your pulse. Because that's something we should be excited about this morning. Ah, good morning. Ah, so excited about this baptism this morning. Uh, baptism is, it's an outward sign of what's happening inside. And I've been able to watch Erica over the years just grow in God and just really seek after him. And I'm so excited about this today. And she has something she'd like to share with you. On Sunday, I was at the altar, and then I just, like, kind of looked up and then got this immediate thought, like, hey, I want to get baptized on my birthday. <laughs> and it, just, it was so random. It just, it was just so immediate, and I was like, I was ra that was random, so I was like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> and um, at camp, or <laughs> At camp, the pastor said that there's 4% of Generation Z that are Christians. And I just want to make that percentage go up to 100. And, and I just want to tell people about how great my God is, and I want to be a better witness to my friends and family. Karen, I'm going to put you on the spot. Would you come up here and, and say a prayer over our youth and just over, over their hearts, their souls, and their fire and their passion this morning? Lord Jesus, I just pray over these young people, Lord God, who just have a fire in their hearts for you, Lord. I pray that you would help them to stay diligent in feeding that every single day, Lord God, that they would just dive into your word. I pray that you would give them a fresh hunger for you, Lord God, every morning. I pray, Lord, that they wouldn't let a go day go by, a day pass, where they don't enter into your presence, Lord God. I pray for Erica, Lord God, as she's taken a step in faith to proclaim her faith to the nations, Lord God, that you would just equip her and encourage her, Lord God, and put people in her path to just encourage her on this journey. 
morning, Lord God, for all of these youth, Lord God, that are taking a step, Lord God. They're pressing into you. I pray that you would bless them. Help us as a church family, Lord God, to be mindful of them, to lift them up in prayer and to support them on their journey, no matter what that looks like, Lord God, as they use their lives to glorify you, Lord God, as they put you first, Lord Jesus. We just thank you. We celebrate, Lord God, along with you in heaven today, Lord God, the decisions that are being made and the progress that has been taken for your kingdom's sake, Lord God. I pray that you would bless them and be with them, Lord. And it's in your precious and holy name we thank you for this and we pray. Amen. God, I'm begging, please, again, I need you. Oh, God, I need you. Walking down these desert roads, water for my thirsty soul, I need you. Oh, God, I need you. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips It's like the sound of a symphony to my ears It's like holy water on my skin A dead man walking slave to sin I want to know about being born again I need you Oh God I need Take me to the riverside, take me under and baptize, I need you, oh God, I need you, your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips, it's like the sound of a symphony to my ear. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Oh, I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Your forgiveness, it's like sweet. I holy water on my sea is thy holy water. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes and be.
for your presence in this place, Lord Jesus. God, as we continue to worship you, we just submit to you, Father. Last week, um, Neely kind of came up and said a message about, about if you haven't received your victory, then don't give up on it. Because your healing, your intervention may be right around the corner. So don't ever give up on it. I've asked her to come up here and help me sing a song this morning. And it's called Sea of Victory. I might kind of put her on the spot a little bit, but but today might be the point in time when God's ready to grant you that victory. But remember that he has already granted you the best victory of all. He has already given it to you. He's already done it. He's done the work. You don't have to ask him to do it because he's already done it. All you have to do is claim it and receive it.
It's from the Lord. Here comes your victory. Here comes your victory. Here comes your victory. It's from the Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good. Turn it for good. You take. such a powerful truth that we have victory in Jesus. Overwhelming victory, the Word says. And just because you're in a tough situation right now or in a tough season right now doesn't mean there's victory. There's not victory on the other side. Sometimes we've got to remember the victories He's already won. You've already won a victory over sin and hell and death. And that's worth celebrating. That's enough to give us strength because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can go another day. Thank you for the victory you've already won. And I know what you've already done in my life. It gives me great faith to know that you're going to continue to be faithful. You're going to continue to see me through. And, and I know there's people in this room that have, have been, been faced with some things for, for decades. Chronic pain, chronic fatigue. You've been praying for a family member for decades. Our God is faithful. Every situation we go through, He's faithful. And we go through some tough things in this life. It doesn't mean that He's not for you, that He's not still, still with you, that His love for you has changed. Sometimes we just go through rough things, but He's going to see you through that. And in this life or the next, we do have victory. 
No matter what we face in this life, if you're a believer, your story ends in victory. And, and we forget that. So we can celebrate the victories already won. And if we don't see anything else in this life, we know that overwhelming victory is ours. When we stand in the presence of Jesus, everything that we face is going to be worth it. Everything that you've gone through, it's going to be worth it. So can you just in your own words, just say thank you, Jesus, for the victory that you've already won, for the victory that awaits me. And whether I see a breakthrough in my situation or not, it doesn't change the fact that I know you're still faithful. I know you're still good. Just begin to lift him up and thank him for what he already has done. just impressed something on Bentley's heart and just reminded her of something she's going to remind us of. We're talking about a victory here tonight or this morning, but um, God, these angels up in heaven, they're already celebrating, celebrating a victory. We just got another, another amazing young woman in God's army with us and this revival that we've been talking about, it's happening right now. And we just gotta fight for it. Because in God, there's always victory. And these angels are already celebrating because they know. They know that God's gonna bring a victory. Some great things are gonna change in this world. I, I wanna go close with the verse that that Bernie opened with, therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. Some of you need to memorize that, that verse. We never give up. Keep fighting the good fight. Keep our eyes focused on Christ. Something that we're not great at in, in America is running our race with endurance. Any kind of setback, we, we doubt the Lord or we get knocked down and we're supposed to run our race with endurance and we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the initiator. He began something. He's going to be faithful to see it through your entire life. So let's keep our eyes on Christ. Father, I thank you for your goodness, for your faithfulness. Lord, help us to keep our eyes fixed on you. And just like it says in this chapter in 2 Corinthians, we, we don't focus our eyes on what we can see. We focus on the, on the realities of heaven, Lord God. We know your faithfulness. Remind us of that in this moment. We're grateful for you, God. We celebrate who you are. God, fill us with your strength and your peace and your presence. In your name we pray. Amen. I've got... Sorry, before we go back into that, I've got two announcements I, I forgot about. You guys know I forget something every week. Um, one is is mask. I know um, some of you were aware, some of you weren't. Listen, they're required, not recommended. Um, and, and I know we have a lot of different feelings about that. If, if it frustrates you, just pray that we see a victory over this coronavirus, all right? That's what we need is we just need a breakthrough, and hopefully we can move forward. And um, so just hopefully for the next two weeks, and we'll reevaluate as a board um, where we're at. We're kind of following the state's guidelines. And then Pastor Cletus um, wanted to announce a few things. Sorry that I forgot at the beginning. Thank you. Brother, I appreciate all that you said. I've been on the mission field, not rough places like you've been, but my goodness, doesn't that stir your heart, what God is doing in other countries? Amen. Even giving their life, really, that's tremendous. I just want to mention two things. This church has a great name in the state of Indiana. It always has have. I want to keep it that way. I'm going to encourage you on Wednesday night. I know a lot of you have got a habit of coming to church through this virus of thing, but I want to encourage you to be here on Wednesday night. I just think you'll find strength. We pray together. We worship together. We try to give something, whoever it is, to share the word 
So let me encourage you. Would you just make an effort to come here for Wednesday nights and let's let God do a good thing. One more thing, you know I've worked with what we call the Blue House in Clay City for some time. It's going to be a place that's going to take care of addicted women. We're finding there's thousands of women from the veterans that are homeless. And this will place to help them. And I'm mentioning that because August the 15th will be the dedication of this. And some of you have asked me about this. And Lieutenant Governor Suzanne Crouch will be there. Senator Eric Brashler will be there. Representative Bob Heaton will be there. It's at 12 o'clock. If you can make it, I think you would really enjoy coming and just supporting what's taking place there. God bless you. Appreciate you. Thank you. You guys are officially dismissed. Yeah. Have my, a great week. My wife just said that I said it backwards. Mask our... Uh, Help me, Alex. Uh, recommended? Recommended, not required. So sorry if I said that backwards. So um, thank you. <laughs> Love you guys. Have a great week.